Wittenberg Project. Racial reconciliation is a big topic, especially around this time. And um, you'll, you'll, there's so many resources about Dr. Martin Luther King. One of the best ones that I've come across was this one right here. Martin Luther King was one of the most important figures of the 20th century in the United States. He consolidated and led a peaceful civil rights movement for African Americans from the mid-1950s until his murder in 1968. His 1964 speech, I Have a Dream, is perhaps one of the most important discourses given by any American in the 20th century. And yet he is known to most conservative reformed folk as a theological liberal, and for that reason has sometimes been regarded with suspicion. In other quarters, however, he... Martin Luther King Day. It's a day that, you know what I'm saying, is celebrated and recognized from Atlantic to Pacific, you know? So it's a very big deal, you know what I'm saying? Especially for, you know, well, for everybody, for any American, from my point of view, should be, you know? You'll hear a lot of podcasts, a lot of things go into depth about him. You might be shocked to find out that, at least I was, that the best one, the best ones I've ever heard was in like 2012 by R. Scott Clark. You know, he was interviewing Micah Edmondson, Pastor Micah Edmondson. He had another guest on, I wasn't sure his name, but yo, it was fascinating. It was fascinating. They touched on things that weren't like typically touched on. Like, usually when you tell people, people talk about Martin Luther King, they focus on the civil rights stuff. Him being a people organizer, people mover, and the, the point that he had in regards to that. Micah brought some interesting things out talking about him as a theologian that, yo, you never really hear delved into. They often do it at the expense of what is actually there. Uh, so I started to dig around a little bit more and I realized that, first of all, there's not a lot of people that are dealing with King as a theologian. A lot of people are dealing with him as, as an activist or an ethicist or a preacher, but not seriously as a theologian. That was unfortunate because King uh, got his Ph.D. in philosophical theology from Boston University, and he did his dissertation on Paul Tillich uh, and Henry Nelson Wyman's Doctrine of God. When King was arrested in Birmingham, one of the multiple times he was arrested in Birmingham, the one item that he requested that his wife bring him was a copy of Tillich's Systematics. So King was, he was very theological. Or if you do hear about him as a, as a theologian or as a pastor, a lot of times, I mean, you'll hear about some questionable beliefs he had, you know? And no one really addresses it. So you're just like, oh, wow, he, he said what? Really? Like, yo, is he even a Christian? Like, you'll get that. You'll get that. And and uh, I won't sure because the question of views are serious. You know what I'm saying? But a good point that I never knew that Micah brought out was... So later is, on, King ends up actually co-pastoring Ebenezer Baptist Church with his father, Daddy King. And think about this. King is co-pastoring a church with what he called a fundamentalist. Well, Daddy King was just a Bible preacher, just a conservative Bible preacher, and yet his son is pastoring this church with him because what he sees his son doing is applying Scripture to a social situation that most African Americans really understood. They thought of King as a Christian who was acting in a Christian way. He thought of himself that way. Martin Luther King Sr., his dad, was a fundamentalist, hardcore. You know what I'm saying? So hypothetically, let's say, if someone's labeled that, right, if 20 years later they allow someone who you thought was or perceived as a liberal, held unchristian beliefs to be assistant pastor of their church, there's only a couple of conclusions you can have. You can have that that fundamentalist pastor is now okay with liberalism and uh, liberalism in a negative context of, you know, denying miracles and things of that nature, or the new assistant pastor had his eyes and ears open and came to a census. Those are really the only two, you know, um, conclusions you can have. And there's no proof that Martin Luther King's daddy became some, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> went that route, you know. But he brought up an issue of Martin Luther King uh, Jr. had a dream one day. And nah, not the speech, not the speech, not the speech. And he um, came to the conclusion that I have to return to the God of my father. 
There's one story from actually he he relates this in a book he wrote on a, his memoir on a book Montgomery bus boycott stride toward freedom. You know King got many many death threats, but there was one in particular that struck him. King was awakened in the middle of the night by a caller who says that he's going to kill him and he's going to bomb his home. And this really rattled King. So King would receive up to 40 death threats a day. But this one in particular just struck him and he tried to get over it and tried to get over it, but he just couldn't get back to sleep and it just bothered him. And he found himself really coming to the end of himself. And he says there in in the kitchen all alone, uh, he goes on his knees and he cries out to God. And he says, I couldn't call on the God of Protestant liberalism. I had to call on the God that my father preached and that my father knew. And later on, he would return to that in his moments of deepest doubt. Like, like acknowledging that, you know, that his beliefs were off or things of that nature. Now, it doesn't go into detail about how much he thought was off, how much he thought was wrong. But that's a big acknowledgement, you know, to the point where it's not as easy to write him off as a Christian or not and delve into that by his theological beliefs. Um, another point they brought up that was great, that was great, was... When a group of people writes off Dr. Martin Luther King, it's kind of hard to evangelize the black community. Dr. King, and is our suspicion of him, however warranted it may or may not be, part of the barrier that keeps us from reaching that community? Mm. Yes, in some ways, a suspicion of Dr. King could be a barrier because a suspicion of Dr. King is also a suspicion of the black church tradition. Because Dr. King is a product of the black church tradition. He's a product of the black community. If the black church, if it ever had a saint in the Catholic sense, (laughs) it would be Martin Luther King Jr. You have to be careful when you are rejecting him for the wrong reasons and you're doing it without seriously engaging him. Because, like, from our point of view, from my point of view, it's hard for you to sit here and saying that, yo, the one guy who was willing to risk his life and risk everything, family, everything to make it so I'm treated with human dignity and treated in the image of God. He's a heretic, but these bastions of orthodoxy stood on the sidelines and wouldn't comment, speak, or organize, or step to the forefront. To help a brother. What does the Bible say? Um, he who loves is willing to live, uh, risk his life for his, lose his life for his neighbor. Like, it's kind of hard for you to approach me or the black community when that's your stance. You know, and I don't lie, I, I had a hard time with this because every year around Martin Luther King Day, people come out with the, yeah, he's great at civil rights, but he's no Christian. He's a heretic. Even though the day is mostly about his civil action, they find a way to bring it up. Now, one of the points I'm saying is we should focus on his theology in general. In general, I still think the day is about his civil actions and things of that nature. But the point they brought up was is when talking to uh, black people, not even Christians, black people in general, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard to have someone take you seriously when you're literally saying one of the major figures in the 20th century that went by and is known as a Christian and you're just bashing him. You're just talking bad about him. You know, about by his faith, his belief, when a lot of things he did, Martin Luther King Jr. was based on his belief and things in the Christian faith and working from that type of system and that viewpoint. So, um, it's a great podcast, man. It's, it's a great episode. And, um, as you don't know, I don't really agree theologically with uh, R. Charles Clark or Micah Emerson, you know, in regards to various things, they know that, I know that, you should know that, but it's one of the best models of the King podcast, because they touch on these, these type of topics, they touch on it, and you might not get that everywhere, you might not get that everywhere, Wittenberg Project. I almost forgot, I'm going to put a link to the Office Hours episode I was referring to and talking about in the description below, um, hopefully R. Scott, uh, Clark or Heidelberg or Office Hours doesn't pull me for using some of the audio. Anyhow, God bless, and I hope that, um, I hope y'all find it interesting. You know what I'm saying? The link's below. I definitely recommend you guys check it out.